Hey, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to tell you everything that I know about poor man's fiberglass. And this is the third trailer that I've used this technique on. It is, however, the first trailer that was made out of foam that I've used poor man's fiberglass on. So uh, we had a lot of learning to do. We did several trials on other pieces of foam just to make sure that we were going to get proper adherence and that this was going to be strong enough. Now, the inside walls of the trailer, we also applied poor man's fiberglass too to help uh, provide extra strength. But I just want to take you through the technique and some little tips that I've picked up, particularly on how to get perfect corners. We applied some eighth inch Baltic birch trim and this has uh, adds a little bit of extra strength to the corners as well as adding a really nice look to it. Now I oftentimes get asked, how good is poor man's fiberglass? Well, poor man's fiberglass is absolutely as good as you apply it. It can be a fantastic finish. It's been used for decades in planes and boats. Um, and, or it can look really terrible. So it really comes down to attention to detail and really following the steps properly. It should be noted that before we put this trim on, we had already sanded off the foam. So in the upper corner here, you can see a little clip of doing that to other parts of the trailer. So we wanted to get that little sheeny part of the foam off, and then we kind of scored it a little bit, and that allowed the glue to really penetrate the foam and get a really good bond. For the glue, I prefer Tight Bond 2 over Tight Bond 3. It is just easier to work with, rolls on really nicely, and the paint is going to provide plenty of protection for the project. I don't really think that you gain any advantage by using Tight Bond 3, and like I said, Tight Bond 2 rolls out a lot smoother. I'm using a smooth roller cover, and that gives just the right amount of glue. You want it to be covered thoroughly, but you definitely do not want it to be too thick so that it soaks through the canvas. You want a chance for the um, paint that's with water first to really get into that canvas. And that's what's really going to make it stiff and provide a lot of strength. If you have trim like this, you want to make sure that the glue is actually getting onto the side, inside side of the trim as well. That's going to be really important and making sure that the canvas actually sticks to that part. If you want a nice finish, it's very important that you wash, dry, and pre-press the canvas before you put it on. Any deep wrinkles, you're not going to be able to get out um, once it's on the trailer. I've used a few different techniques for getting the canvas onto the trailer. For my bigger trailer, I actually rolled it over a foam um, big pool noodle, and that worked really well. Um, for this one, it's small enough that we're just going to kind of drape this over. And the big key is you never want to be stretching the canvas. You want to have plenty of material to work with. So you'll see that we're all just going to gently lay this down. So we're just smoothing this out with our hands as we go and I'm making sure to try to push some of that canvas into where that trim is and that's very important um, and I'll show you this I have a little bit better uh, clip when I'm working on the hatch but on the back hatch of my first trailer there is a little spot where I was probably pulling the canvas thinking I needed to stretch it and um, and and there's a little bit of air under one part where the trim is and it's been fine for the past six years but I do feel that that is a point that could eventually break down. In all of my experiments, there was no issue with running the iron over the foam, but I still ran it at about 70% heat instead of 100% just because I was a little bit more nervous about it. Um, when I did the wooden trailers, I just did 100% heat, and this is where you can really try to work out any wrinkles, and it's an extremely important step. So for the ironing step here, I'm going to jump over to the clip on the hatch because here hopefully you can see a little bit better how I'm going to really try to work that iron into the edges of the trim and into the corners. Again, you just want to make sure that you get that well adhered so when you're placing the canvas on, you want to allow enough material. Don't be pulling and stretching on it. This trailer has a grid that's going to go over it on the outside, so I cut a spacer block just to be the same width as the grid, and I'm just going to mark out where we need to cut the canvas. As we round the corner, it's very important that we're pulling the fabric to keep it perpendicular to the edge, and this is going to be really important as we glue and iron this down as well. Now when you're cutting this, you just want to use really sharp scissors because you want to avoid extra strings or fraying the fabric. So next we're just going to put some glue up underneath the canvas overhang and then we're going to start working on uh, getting this down with the iron. Okay, so around the curves is where some real diligence makes a huge difference. So as I mentioned when we were cutting this, you want to keep pulling this perpendicular. You know, it's kind of 
it, as you're going, it's easy to start pulling down and just getting the part that you're currently working on smooth and then ending up with too much material at one point that you have to try to cut out. And I want to make sure that I keep all of the canvas there so that there's you know, a nice overlap that's giving the whole trailer kind of a hug and keeping everything together. If you end up cutting and getting right close to that, um, the edge, then that's a point where eventually water and stuff could start to make its way in. So I definitely don't want to do that. So if you just keep pulling this perpendicular and working the fabric into kind of very, very small pleats, and then continue to iron those out smaller and smaller until you end up with no um, pleats at all and it's very possible to get this but it just takes some serious time so notice how I just continue to work this with the iron and with my fingers and eventually I'm able to get all of those pressed out. All right, so now we're mixing up the paint and we're doing 50-50 water paint mix and we're gonna do a 75-25 um, paint to water ratio and then three full coats. So I'm gonna flip to a clip of doing this on the flat so you can see just how watery this is. All right, so this is when the real fun begins and gets really messy. So I have 50-50 um, paint water mix and any old exterior paint is perfect for this. It doesn't matter, it doesn't really matter the color. Um, you know, something that'll be fairly easy to paint over with the color that you selected. But you can see this is drippy and very messy and it's going to drive Tom crazy. Yes, this is very <laughs> drippy, very messy, and I'm already blowing like OCD <laughs> <laughs> So, um, I find it easiest to just go right to a bucket, otherwise you're just filling your tray up so much. But, I like to take it from the bucket to the tray and get a little bit of the excess off before you go to your wall. Now I've never done this down. I've always had to do it when it was uh, upright. So this is very interesting. It's gonna be much easier and much less messy when we do the outside. These are the inner walls. When we do the outside, it'll be all assembled. So then we'll be doing this um, vertical instead of horizontal, so. And, and Lucy, what I'm noticing here is this is this the paint is literally getting sucked down in yep. there like a sponge exactly i mean the the fabric is like it's sponge like yep and that's what you want you want your fabric to still be sponge like which is why you don't want to have your glue coming through the canvas because then you're not going to have that sponge and it's not going to get down into the fibers because the paint's what's really providing the protection makes sense otherwise then the paint just sits on top of the glue and the glue is protective, but um, but it's not gonna it's not gonna bond the same. Your paint could end up with issues down the road then, mm -hmm. and you're not gonna get that super smooth, cool finish. Mm -hmm. And then here is that process as we do it on the final outside coat. So at this point, it feels like about 100 grit sandpaper. So it's very, very important that you sand between each coat if you want a really nice finish. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with a rough like rhino liner type finish. So sanding definitely is a key step. 120 or 220 sandpaper are totally fine. I just usually use whatever was on the sander. You're just kind of knocking off that outer layer. Um, and doing this with a dust extractor is amazing. On the last two trailers, I didn't have a dust extractor, so this did get a little bit dusty. And with the dust extractor, it was fantastic. I didn't even have to brush the trailer off in between coats. So after another coat of 75% paint and 25% water and sanding again, we now finally get to put the final coat on. So you'll notice that Tom's making sure to get paint into that seam where that trim work is. And then I'm gonna go ahead and roll this on. And this is really exciting because you get to kind of start to see what your final product's going to look like. And again, I continue to use a smooth roller cover for this step. So I continue to sand between each coat and that's gonna keep getting it smoother and smoother with every coat. I was very satisfied after three coats, but you can apply as many as you would like. Again, if, as long as you sand in between each one, they will continue to get smoother and smoother. 
If you're enjoying my work, please like and subscribe and continue to follow along with this project. I have a few more build videos to get out, and I hope that you get a chance to try to make something with poor man's fiberglass. I've been extremely happy with the trailers that I've made in the past. Have a great time building.